Hi everybody, my name is Steve Koh and I'm an associate professor at Simon Fraser University. In this video, I'd like to give you a preview of the topics discussed in mobile app session. It is session 3 and the session is on Tuesday, June 29th at 12 p.m. in Eastern Time. The mobile app session represents a broad category of research that can be described as support for mobile applications. It is an important area of research because we all use mobile apps and we want them to be better in many different ways. For example, we want them to be faster, more reliable, cheaper, more usable, etc. etc. This year at Mobisys, we have three papers in the mobile app session that touch on three different topics in mobile application support. The first paper is TAP, an app framework for dynamically composable mobile systems. And the topic is how to enable a more seamless experience when using multiple devices. The second paper is Marauder, Synergized Caching and Prefetching for Low-Risk Mobile App Acceleration. And the topic of the paper is how to alleviate network latency to make mobile apps more responsive. The third paper is Throughput Fairness Trade-Offs in Mobility Platforms. And the topic is how to match user requests to available workers for geek economy apps such as Uber, DoorDash, etc. With these three papers, what I would like to do is to go over their topics and discuss what they are, what their challenges are, and what kinds of solutions there are. It's not my job to talk about these, these papers themselves in this video, and I will just talk about the background briefly. So let's start with the first paper, TAP. These days, a lot of us have multiple devices. For example, we have a smartphone, we have a tablet, and we have a watch and other kinds of devices. And mostly, these devices work as separate, individual devices. So researchers have long been asking this question. How can we use multiple devices seamlessly as if they were really a single device? And over the years, many interesting papers have approached this problem from many different angles. Since there are quite a few papers that deal with this question, I am just going to mention a few papers that I believe are directly related to TAP. Now, when you try to enable seamless use of multiple devices as if they were a single device, you essentially need to enable resource sharing. Resource sharing here means that you provide a mechanism through which a remote resource becomes available to your local device. For example, if a user can seamlessly use hardware resources, like touch screens from two different devices, then the user will think that the two devices work like a single device, at least with respect to the touch screen usage. This resource sharing can be done in various places, and an important design decision to make is where to enable such functionality. If you consider the whole mobile system stack, there are really three la layers, the application layer, the framework layer, and the kernel layer. The application layer obviously has applications. The framework layer has user space system services and libraries, and the kernel layer has kernel space system services. What we conventionally call a mobile operating system includes the framework layer and the kernel layer. Now, depending on which layer you choose to implement resource sharing, you will face very different challenges and you will need to make very different design decisions. As a result, in the end, you will get a vastly different system. For example, TAP is an application layer solution, which means that you need to modify mobile apps in order to take advantage of TAP. However, you don't need to modify anything in the framework layer or the kernel which means that you don't need to modify the OS, which in turn means that the deployment is easier. Also, apps are aware of the fact that it is using tab, so they are customized, they can customize how to leverage tab in their own ways. Other works like Mobile Plus, M2, or Fluid implement resource sharing in the framework layer. This means that they can be transparent to mobile apps and support unmodified apps but it is more difficult to deploy because the framework layer needs to be modified. It is also difficult to keep up with OS updates. 
because the functionality needs to be implemented for new OS versions. Lastly, Rio implements resource sharing in the kernel layer. This means that it is transparent to not just applications, but also frameworks. However, you have a similar deployment challenge with framework layer solutions because you need to modify the kernel. Of course, if you read these papers, they have their own goals and target scenarios, which differ across the papers. TAP, for example, doesn't just enable resource sharing, but it, else, but it also has additional concern that resource sharing should be easy. Fluid, as another example, focuses on display or UI sharing rather than general resource sharing. Similarly, other works have their own goals and targets. And depending on the exact set of features you want to provide, sometimes you have no other choice but to implement the features in a certain layer. So as you watch the video for TAB, it'll be beneficial to think about what exact set of features that TAB wants to provide and how that affects the design choices that TAB makes. So that was about TAB, and the talk will be the first talk for session three. The next paper is Marauder, and the topic of the paper is mobile app responsiveness, meaning how quickly can an app respond to user requests. Responsiveness has always been a big concern for researchers. I think this is because if there's a delay, we immediately associate that with something going wrong. But in any case, you can find various statistics on the web about how users behave if things slow down. For example, Amazon says every additional 100 milliseconds of latency costs them 1% in sales. And Google says an extra 0.5 seconds in search page generation time dropped traffic by 20%. If you read the Marauder paper, it cites a few other papers that say the users will stop using apps or delete them if their response times exceed 2 to, two to 3 seconds. So responsiveness is clearly a concern. And if you want to improve responsiveness, the first question you should ask is what's the bottleneck? For mobile apps, the answer is not very difficult to guess. Most mobile apps access backend servers to fetch contents, and the network is the bottleneck for that. The Marauder paper itself shows that the 90th percentile response times are 3.7 seconds for Wi-Fi and 6.7 seconds for LTE, which is not good at all. So previous research has approached this problem of improving responsiveness from two angles. One is caching, and the other is prefetching. As you might know already, caching is a popular concept, and it works well if the content is static and accessed repeatedly. For mobile apps, caching is usually de determined by HTTP, because most apps use HTTP to communicate with their servers. In HTTP, there's a header called cache control, which holds the directives for caching. The directives include things like whether or not something is cacheable, and if that's the case, how long it can be cached, which is referred to as time to live or TTL. Mobile apps use this feature to cache downloaded contents. At this point, you might be thinking that we all know about caching, and we've been working on this since forever, and what's there to look at? The thing is that finding an effective caching strategy is still not an easy thing to do, because it really depends on the workload and you need to have a thorough understanding of your workload before making good decisions. For example, you have to determine the right TTL or time to live, and studies have shown time and again that in various domains, whether it be web browsers or mobile apps, there is, there's no single TTL that works for everything. Also, there can be multiple handles to the same content, for example, Multiple URLs can point to the same content. If that's the case, you have to take that in into consideration for caching. Otherwise, you'll, mi you'll miss a big caching opportunity. There are actually a large number of previous works looking at caching, but Marauder has some clever ways to deal with caching, which I am sure the Marauder paper will, um, will explain, and the video will explain too. Marauder actually uses caching in combination with prefetching, which is what I'm going to talk about next. 
So prefetching is another popular way to improve responsiveness. And it means that you run a prediction algorithm that tells you which contents will be accessed soon. And you download them in a speculative fashion. If, you predict, if your prediction is correct, then your response will be quick since you have what you need already. On the other hand, if your prediction is incorrect, then you pay the price since you have wasted bandwidth and spent data already. So the key is how to predict future usage and, and as you can guess, this is not so easy. Some of the previous works, such as Paloma and AppX, use static analysis to understand the app behavior for prediction. Other previous works, such as EBC and IMP, ask for developers' input in order to determine what to prefetch. Other works, like Luxi, use the history of requests to understand which contents are frequently requested together and prefetch those. Marauder, as I mentioned already, has some clever ways to use prefetching in combination with caching. So as you watch the video for Marauder, it will be beneficial to pay attention to how Marauder uses both caching and prefetching to improve the responsiveness of mobile apps. And that's for Marauder, and it's the second talk of the mobile app session. The last paper of the session is Throughput Fairness Trade-offs in Mobility Platforms, and the topic is how to schedule jobs for, for mobility platforms, such as gig economy apps like Uber and DoorDash. Gig economy apps are a popular category of apps, and there are so many of them now, such as Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Instacart, etc., etc. In all these apps, a common thing they need to do is, a, is to match a customer's request to an available gig worker, and they need to do this on demand as requests come in. This is basically an online scheduling algorithm or problem where jobs are user requests and there are workers who can process user requests. And you need to schedule incoming jobs to available workers. Now, when you have this kind of scheduling problem, you need to have an objective that you're aiming for. This is typically in the form of maximizing something or minimizing something. For example, you could try to schedule jobs in order to maximize the number of jobs you finish within a given time unit, like a second, and this is often referred to as throughput. You could also try to schedule jobs in order to minimize the average travel distance for your workers. Or you could try to schedule jobs in order to minimize the average job completion time, which is often referred to as make span. And if you think about it, these are in some, sen in some sense competing goals. In order to see that, let's consider DoorDash, which is a food delivery app. For DoorDash, maximizing throughput means processing as many requests as possible, which is certainly a good objective but it may not result in good customer satisfaction because you might just serve short jobs and not take on jobs that will take a long time. Now, minimizing travel distance for DoorDash means that you help your workers to minimize their travel overhead, which again is a good objective. But then you might end up serving only those users who live close to restaurants. Lastly, Minimizing make span means minimizing overall delivery time, and it is certainly good for customers, but you might only serve fast food requests to the users who live close to those restaurants. Now, the throughput fairness trade-offs paper identifies fairness as another important objective, and the talk video will tell you what they mean by fairness and how they balance throughput and fairness at the same time. So that's our last paper. So these are the three papers for session three, TAP, Marauder, and Throughput Fairness Trade-Offs. I hope you join us to watch the videos and enjoy the talks. The session is on Tuesday, June 29th at 12 p.m. in Eastern Time. See you at the session.